What is up, fellow nerds, and welcome back to the Dapper Snapper Gaming Channel, and welcome back to How Do I Want to Do This? This is our series where we take a look at all playable options available to players in Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition, and then we rank them on a scale of 1 to 10, and then we either build them together or fix them if they don't quite meet our criteria. Now, today we are talking about the College of Creation Bard, and of course, building one together since we went ahead and ranked it on Tuesday. If you missed that video, it will be up in the iCard above right there. But I hope that you guys are ready to check this out because I am. If you are, make sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe if you haven't already. As you can see, the vast majority of viewers of this channel are actually not subscribed, so it really, really helps me out if you will subscribe. We're trying to get to 500 subscribers by the end of this year, and I think we can get there. So please, help me out. It would really, really make me happy. It would make, it would make my Christmas. We're trying to get to 500 by the end of the year, so please, help me out. Also, make sure to click that bell right next to it to make sure that you're notified whenever new videos go live and share with your friends so that your friends don't miss out on any future videos as well. So the College of Creation Bard is a very unique take on the Bard and it allows you to create items where most other Bards would definitely not be able to do that um, and gives you some pretty unique abilities overall. It's, it's really, really cool. Now, I will say, I'm not super into Dungeons & Dragons lore, um, at least the greater lore of the universe, um, unless it is specifically within a specific campaign setting, or uh, if I've written a campaign, then obviously I'm into that lore, but um, the overarching like deep lore of D&D, not really something that I keep track of, um, so forgive me on that one. But one thing that I did notice about this subclass is that it mentions that this subclass is especially important to Dragonborns. And I thought, well, this man's Treasure of Dragons just dropped, and I picked up my copy earlier this week, so yeah, let's go ahead and use one of those. So we're gonna use one of the new Dragonborn races just to have fun with it. Now, I will say that this is definitely not an optimized build because the Dragonborn is not optimized for a bard. Um, the new Dragonborn is definitely more optimized for a fighter or a monk, somebody with a lot of attacks. Um, that's that's what you're looking for here. Um, and unfortunately, this doesn't quite give that to you, but it is going to be a lot of fun playing one of the new Dragonborns because you get a lot of really cool stuff. If you're wanting to play Dragonborn and you're thinking about playing the old version, uh, don't because it's terrible. Uh, only play the new version um, and so you get three uh, larger classes of dragon to choose from you get the gem the metallic and the chromatic dragons now I'm going to go with a gem dragon here because we are going with more of a uh, support build utility build for this one um, kind of being the the jack of all trades the one that's always got the magic key to whatever it is you need um, so we're a support build we're not going to be necessarily the uh, biggest damage dealer here so that's not what we're going for Sorry if that's what we were looking for. Um, but so here's what we get. We get to choose from five different options of breath weapon here. Um, and it is tied to what type of dragon we are. So amethyst, crystal, emerald, sapphire, and topaz, each of them having a corresponding damage type. So with this damage type, your breath weapon, which is a 15 foot cone as a gem dragonborn, um, you can actually replace an attack with this anytime you take the attack action. Obviously we only have one attack here, but on other classes you could you could technically attack and then breath weapon within the same uh, within the same go. Um, but so your breath weapon is going to be of the type that you choose, and it is going to be a 15 foot cone based on a dexterity saving throw, which is based on your constitution. So definitely want to get constitution up as far as you can go, as quickly as you can go, um, and it is going to be very, very helpful. It does 1d10 damage, and then it scales at each of your cantrip scaling levels. So that's one thing that's interesting is you kind of have a 15 foot cone Eldritch Blast now, which is really, really neat. Um, I, I like that if you if you go with force or whatever else you want. Um, so it's, it's pretty neat, I, I really like it. So obviously you would be resistant to whatever type you take. Then you get a couple of other things that are really, really neat. Um, you get one way telepathy, which is really cool. Um, you can talk to other creatures telepathically just just in their minds it's really cool they can't respond so it's not it's not like the message cantrip but um but it still would be very useful to be able to communicate with somebody you're the infiltrator you're telling people what's going on outside um it's it's really cool i really really like that to to have and i think it's it's definitely one of the main reasons why i chose this um and then also the other main reason i chose this is at level five you can fly <sighs> 
Uh, I don't know why anyone would not want to do that because flight is really, really good. So yeah, you'll be able to fly. Um, you can activate it and it is for one minute and you have a flying speed equal to your walking speed. And that is once per long rest, but still really, really awesome. For our stats, of course, we are going to be using our modified standard array that we always use, and that is going to put a 17 in Charisma. We're going to put our 15 in Dex, 13 in Constitution, 12 in Wisdom, 10 in Intelligence, and 8 in Strength. This is probably just the optimized way to do this. Um, you could switch Dexterity and Constitution and, and probably get a little bit of different results, probably better results. Um, but I, I like this being able to actually have a little bit of Dexterity there for our ranged attacks if we need to do any of that. Um, and also our armor class, which is going to be very low. We need all the help that we can get, unfortunately. Um, so then we get a plus two and a plus one to two different stats. Our plus two is, of course, going to Charisma, so we have a 19 there. And, of course, our plus one going to Constitution, we have a 14 there. So, finally, we make it to where we choose our class. Now, this took a little bit. Um, I've rearranged this build several times, um, trying to figure out how I wanted to do this. And originally, I had... Um, I had Resilient Constitution on this build as a feat. The more that I looked at it, I really felt that I couldn't squeeze it in when I wanted to. And so I had to drop it. But when I dropped it, I lost proficiency with Constitution saving throws, aka Concentration checks, and this build relies hard on Concentration checks. Um, most spells you're casting are Concentration. So... <laughs> So I had to drop I had to drop that and I had to go a different direction. So we're gonna break our rule of uh, of how we build uh, how we build characters for this series and we're gonna start with a different class than what we are actually doing the episode on. I know it's shocking it's travesty what are we gonna do uh, but no it'll be okay. Um, we are gonna start something else. And then we are going to make our way to Bard, and we're just going to stay there for the rest of the time. So it will be very much mostly Bard, but we're going to actually start doing something a little bit different. We're going to start with Sorcerer, actually. And I think that this is a really, really good place to start. It gives us the Constitution saving throw proficiency, which is something that we needed. Um, definitely will help us out throughout. And there's a lot of really cool stuff that we get as a low-level Sorcerer as well. So I guess let's start taking some levels. So, level one, here we go. We're going to start off Sorcerer, and we get a couple of things from Sorcerer that are really, really helpful. We get four cantrips right off the bat, which is really, really nice. I, of course, would take Mage Hand. I, of course, would take Firebolt just for some damage. Um, probably take Dancing Lights or Light because you can't see in the dark. Um, and then the fourth one is is your choice, whatever whatever you want to do for for that, um, whether it be damaging, whether it be support. There's there's a lot of really good options on the sorcerer spell list. Um, as far as our actual first level spells, I would go with sleep here for sure. Um, sleep is a really really good first level spell at low level. Um, it it gets very much outrun as you level up, so eventually you just will kind of stop using it. But it's really, really good right now at low level for taking enemies out of the fight. Really, really cool spell. Um, I also would take Magic Missile here just because Magic Missile it gives you a really, really reliable um, way to deal force damage from a pretty good distance away. Um, and it does scale well, so you can always upcast that and do more damage as you get higher level spell slots. Really, really neat um, if you want to choose any others. Great, choice is up to you, whatever you want. Um, we also get to choose our subclass here. and. I was trying to think about what subclass made the most sense here. And of people creating things, people who are, are, are into that, the closest thing, and, and it's a bit of a stretch, but the closest thing I could go with is the Clockwork Soul. Um, the Clockwork Soul is all about balance, is all about um, making sure that everything is as it should be. Um, and yet the uh, creation bard is is also making things are as it should be. And by as it should be, it is uh, whatever you think it should be. And so you're like, I don't have this, I make it. And so things are now as it should be. You're restoring balance. I'm gonna say that you're a very sneaky, very sneaky character, um, morally questionable, um, <laughs> prob probably on this one, and um, probably pretty selfish. But 
it fits. It's there's there's a good arc to be had there. There's there's room for growth. So with the uh, Clockwork Soul Sorcerer, you get your Clockwork Magic. Now this is a very interesting ability here, um, and it's different from other expanded spell lists. So if you read right here, we we haven't covered sorcerer yet on the channel, so I want to make sure that you read this before. Um, but basically, it gives you more spells to add onto our list. We're only going to get the first version of it, so um, we're not going to get a whole lot of spells out of this, but it allows you to switch out these spells if you want from the from several spell lists from Sorcerer, Warlock, Wizard, and you can switch them out for any spell as long as it is in certain schools of magic. I want to go ahead and tell you that the schools of magic that it gives you are perfect for what we are going for as far as a support build bard. Um, and it's it's a little they're a little selfish at least for now but it's going to be really really helpful for you in your survivability so we get alarm and protection from good and evil i really don't want either of those at least more than i want other things so here at level one we're going to drop alarm because we don't even have ritual casting as a sorcerer we don't get it until we become a bard and by that point it's too late so we're going to go ahead and just go ahead and drop that and pick up mage armor instead. You're going to get a lot more mileage out of mage armor. Um, it gives you a 13 plus dex as your AC, so that's going to boost your AC by three, which any bit helps when it's this low. So yeah, it's going to help you quite a bit with your AC. It lasts for eight hours, non-concentration, really, really good spell. Um, we also get restore balance, which might just be one of the strongest level one features of any sorcerer. Um, it's really, really good. Um, basically, if you see a creature um, within within range, ally or foe, that is about to roll with either advantage or disadvantage, they're rolling two die, you can cancel it as a reaction, which is pretty great. So your fighter got shoved to the ground and now there's a melee attack coming in with advantage. Hmm, no, regular, regular attack. So that's pretty great. Um, or you have disadvantage for some reason, maybe it's dark and you're blind and you can go ahead and take away that disadvantage, which is amazing. Um, this is an ability that will come up a lot and this is an ability that you will definitely use and it will absolutely save lives. Um, it can prevent crits where crits could have happened on the second roll. Um, it, it can absolutely, it, it's very, very good for you to have. So. Really, really great uh, features starting off. As far as equipment goes, just the standard stuff. We don't really get armor here because we're not proficient. Uh, and so we're just gonna pick up like a light crossbow and some daggers. Um, that's about it. Um, spell casting focus, whether you want a component pouch or um, or a wand or whatever, whatever it is that you wanna do. Um, that's all up to you as far as flavor. And then we go to level two. We're gonna continue with Sorcerer here, and we're going to actually drop protection from evil and good. Unless this is really, really good in the campaign that you are in specifically, I would drop it, and I would instead take Shield. Um, now, Shield is my is my number one choice here because, as you all know, I love the Shield spell. Um, it's very, very nice. Um, you can either take it for this or you can take it as your third spell learned, um, e either way and then it will give you a plus five to your AC temporarily until um, until your next turn, which is really, really good. Um, as far as other spells to take, um, I would suggest taking something like Grease. Grease is really, really good to have as far as battlefield control at low levels, um, or if you want something for damage, Chromatic Orb is always a really good option. At level two, we also get Font of Magic, and this allows us to have two sorcery points, which we can convert to spell slots. So we will have two, and we will only have two for the rest of our career. So this is an extra first level spell slot, AKA Mage Armor for free, um, or Shield for free, or whatever other first level spell you want for free. Um, I personally would just be like, okay, in the morning, I'm going to convert my sorcery points, and then a few minutes before combat starts, uh, or right before if you can, Mage Armor up, you're good for eight hours, um, and then you are, you're you good to go, and essentially you have the same number of spell slots that you would have had if you hadn't cast Mage Armor. So, really cool. I really like that. Um, definitely, definitely go with that. Finally, level three here. We finally make it to Bard. Um, so we are now a Bard one. And we get a few things. For multi-classing into Bard, um, we get 
a couple of things. We get our spell casting, of course. We get our bardic inspiration as a D6. Um, we get another skill proficiency. We get uh, light armor proficiency, even though we're not using it. Um, and then we also get one instrument of our choice proficiency. And of course, it's going to be bagpipes. It has to be. It definitely, it definitely is bagpipes, just, just for sure. Um, so as part of our spellcasting, we get a couple cantrips here. Um, I'm going to suggest Vicious Mockery and then any other one of your choice that you would like. Um, there's a lot of really, really good there's a lot of really good ones out there, so of course just pick, pick your favorites. Um, then as far as our first level spells go, we get a few here. Um, I definitely am going to suggest taking Bane. Um, Bane is a great debuff spell. Um, great use of our concentration if you if you want to use that. Uh, I really like Bane. Um, Fairy Fire is great for making sure that things don't get away if they are sneaky and creating advantage for your allies, which is fantastic. Um, it also is interesting because if you happen to light up both your opponent and your teammate, so now your teammate would have advantage against it, but you can cancel that with your uh, with your clockwork ability, which is really really cool, your restore balance. So that's cool. So it also it's it helps to be it helps it be a little bit more idiot proof um, as far as keeping you from possibly your own mistakes. I'm into that. I'm, I'm all for that. That's really really good. Um, the other ones that I would take are of course healing word and Tasha's hideous laughter to take something out of the fight. Again, we're looking at support and utility, so we're looking at control as well. Um, and if we can control the battlefield, then that's great. And taking something out of the fight with something like sleep or Tasha's hideous laughter is always a plus. Um, level four, we are a bard two and we get jack of all trades. So we now get a bump to all of our skill proficiencies, which is good. Um, we get song of rest as a D six and then we get magical inspiration as well. Really, really cool features. If you want more information about all of those, make sure to check out my bard video from a couple of weeks ago. That'll be up in the iCard above there and we go into much much more detail otherwise this video would be like hours long at bard level three we get to finally choose our subclass and we are of course taking college of creation so this gives us a couple of features here note of potential so we get a few extra little uh, things that happen when our bardic inspiration is used and then of course we get performance of creation which is what allows us to make these little items to help us out in uh, just causing shenanigans and causing heartache to our dm it's fine it's, it's totally fine um let's get expertise in a couple of skills great um and second level bard spells um here we're gonna take crown of madness for sure um enlarge reduce which is a great concentration spell um allowing you to give a little bump to your your melee characters um heat metal that is one i normally wouldn't suggest for a bard but on this bard specifically I really want you to take it, and we'll talk about why here in just a minute. Um, whole person, invisibility, and suggestion are also really, really good, uh, really, really good support spells as well. Bard level four, we get an ASI or feat, and as tempting as it is to go ahead and bump our charisma, I'm going to not. Um, we're going to leave it at a 19 for now, and instead we're going to take Warcaster. Um, Warcaster is going to help us out a lot as far as making our concentration checks, which is basically what we are doubling down on in this build. You have a lot of really good concentration spells, and we are going to continue to have more as we go. Um, it's really, really great. Uh, it's always good to have... Uh, it's always good to have Warcaster as a spellcaster, especially if you are doing a lot of concentration spells. Um, at Bard 5, our Bardic Inspiration bumps up to a D8. We get Font of Inspiration, which is really cool. Now it's a now it's a bonus action to get our uh, Bardic Inspiration back. And then we get third level Bard spells as well. Um, now keep in mind, every time we are gaining the uh, new bard spells um, because we took two levels in sorcerer we're always going to gain a spell slot of the level higher at the same time that we are getting access to spells of the level that we are on so at this moment we have uh, third level bard spells but we have a fourth level spell slot um, just with no spells to cast on it um, so Feel free to upcast using that spell slot. Um, as far as spells to take here though, um, Hypnotic Pattern is a great one. Um, I would definitely, definitely take that one. Mass Healing Word is, is a fantastic one as well. Um, and the big reason that we don't need Alarm here is that now we can take Liaman's Tiny Hut. 
Um, I like t Lehman's Tiny Hut. I like Lehman's Tiny Hut a lot. Um, you can ritual cast it as a bard, which is great. And so it's not going to use up your spell slot. You don't have to worry if you're out of spell slots. You can make a dome for yourselves and hide in the dome at night so that you don't have to worry about keeping watch and having an alarm set and all that. So alarm is completely unnecessary in this build. Um, you can just use Lehman's Tiny Hut and you are good to go. So level eight, we are a bard six, and we get a couple of features here. We get counter charm, but who cares? We also get our animating performance, and this is a really cool feature, um, and I do think that I ranked it a little low in my, my video earlier this week. Um, and the reason is because I failed to mention a few things about this feature. Now, these were pointed out by a commenter named Zoltar in that video, so Thank you to Zoltar for pointing out those things that I did not. Um, and basically, the there is normally a a rule on anything that you affect. So such as like fireball, anything that isn't being worn or carried catches on fire, right? There's no stipulation that what you animate can't be worn or carried. So, meaning. You see the coin pouch on the belt of another person, you can just cover that off of their belt, bring it over to you, doesn't matter if it's being worn or carried. The enemy running up with a sword, you just halt that sword in place. Their armor, you can take control of their armor. Um, and so this is why I suggested taking heat metal, because now not only do you heat up the metal, uh, you heat up their their armor so they've got to get out of it but then you can make their armor chase after them and bash into them and deal all this damage it is so funny what you can do with this um, and so this definitely brings up the uh, versatility of this feature it definitely makes it a lot stronger um, and so yeah you can use it for disarming you can use it for arcane focuses um, armor anything that you can think of again creativity wins out on this feature so I didn't give it enough credit originally, that's on me. Um, yeah, you can do a bunch of stuff with this feature. Really, really exciting stuff. Um, at Bard 7, we do not get any features, but we do get 4th level Bard spells and a 5th level spell slot. Um, I'm going to suggest things like Charm Monster, Dimension Door, Greater Invisibility, Phantasmal Killer, and of course Polymorph because can't go without Polymorph. Um, then of course at Bard 8, we get an ASI or Feat. Um, now we'll go ahead and cap off Charisma. Um, as well as bumping dexterity to 16. Um, so now we have a plus three there and we can of course use that to help our AC as well as our shots with our crossbow. Should we be doing that? We probably aren't doing that all that much, but um, just because we have magic missile, we have our breath weapon. So if you're using it, then it'll help. If you're not, oh well, uh, no, no big deal. Um, Bard nine. Uh, we get our Song of Rest bumps to a D8 and 5th level spells and a 6th level spell slot. Um, animate Objects is a must take here. That's literally like what you're, that's literally like your whole thing. Um, yeah, you definitely have to take Animate Objects here. It's a great spell, does a lot of damage. Um, even though you're a couple late, levels late, it's still, it's still very effective here, um, here at this level. Um, Greater Restoration, of course, is, is fantastic for, for helping out your friends. Mass Cure Wounds and, of course, Raise Dead should you need it. Um, you should hopefully not need it, but as you're starting to get into these levels, you're getting to where people are starting to starting to possibly be able to die here at least a, a little bit. Um, you're, you're facing really, really strong things now, and so dying is a real possibility, and being able to bring them back is absolutely essential. Level 12, Bard 10. We get a couple of things here. We get our Bardic Inspiration bumped up to a D10. We get two more Expertises, and we get Magical Secrets round one. So really, really, really great. So for Magical Secrets, what would I take here? Um, I actually have two suggestions that I really like here. Of course, you can pick whatever you want, but I really, really like uh, Wall of Force. Uh, Wall of Force is one of the best spells just in the game as far as control, and control spells are what we are after. This is probably the best one you can pick up, um, and I really, really like it. So, Wall of Force for sure. Um, the other one is actually a ranger spell that I would suggest, and it is Conjure Barrage. So, you are carrying crossbow ammo, so there's your component for the spell, and you throw it, and it turns into a bunch of them, and it does a bunch of damage. So, 
I think it's not necessarily like the best as far as damage dealing spells go out there. Um, it is very flavorful for what you do though. Um, and so I really like it for this specific bard as far as flavor. Bard 11, level 13. We get six level bard spells as well as a seventh level slot. Um, I only have a couple of suggestions here. There's not a ton that I really like to fit the flavor. Um, mass suggestion, of course, because you're a bard, it's just a bard thing. Um, and then Otto's Irresistible Dance is really, really nice for what we're trying to do as far as controlling the battlefield. Um, bard 12, level 14, we get another ASI or feat. We're going to go ahead and bump our constitution up to a 16. So that's pretty good. We have a 20, 16, and 16 in our in our spell, in our stats that we really need. So I'm really happy about that. Nothing, nothing really much more to say about that. Um, bard 13, level 15, Song of Rest bumps to a D10. And we get seventh level bard spells as well as an eighth level spell slot. Um, seventh level spells, uh, Force Cage is definitely one that I would consider here. Uh, it's it's great. Um, Symbol is another one that I would suggest. It's a very complex spell. I'm not going to go super into it right now, um, but it is very, very good. Um, and then Teleport as well, um, because teleportation, it's always a good thing. Um, there are a chance for mishaps, but it's okay. You'll, you'll be all right. It's fine. <laughs> um, level 14 uh, for Bard, level 16 overall. Magical Secrets and Creative Crescendo. So Magical Secrets, of course, we get to pick up seventh level spells and down any any two spells that we want. Um, simulacrum, <laughs> I mean, we're, we're a, yeah, the, there's not a more perfect spell here than, than that. Um, and also Contingency. I, I would definitely take con Contingency here. It's just such a good spell and it's really good for whatever you want it to be. Um, I would, of course, use it in a utility light, but you can do whatever you want with it. It's really, really nice to have. Um, and of course, Creative Crescendo, um, taking away the um, gold value restriction um, and just helping us out with what we make with our uh, with our main feature of creating performance. Um, at level 15 for Bard, 17 overall, Bardic Inspiration is finally a D12, which is great. Um, we get 8th level Bard spells and a ninth level spell slot. Um, I have four here that are pretty good that I like. Um, Dominate Monster, I really like. Feeble Mind is really nice. Um, Mind Blank and Power Word Stun. Power Word Stun, I'm not as sold on, but um, the other three, really, really nice. Would consider taking those. Uh, Bard 16, level 18, we are going to bump our constitution again to an 18. Um, preparing for whatever is coming at the end, we want to have as good of a chance to pass those concentration checks as we can and you're going to be taking big damage most likely so yeah those concentration checks are going to be tougher to make and so we need all the help we can get level 17 for bard 19 overall we get our song of rest bumped to, D to a d12 and we finally get ninth level spells to choose from um, i would suggest here uh, mass polymorph Power Word Heal, Power Word Kill, and Prismatic Wall. Um, prismatic Wall makes a lot of sense with us creating the wall, um, and you, then you just like shoving people through it. It's really good. Um, it's it's especially good when you can just push people around. You don't really have a way to do that, but um, you know, get with a warlock that can push people with Eldritch Blast, um, and and just push them through. If they want to get back to you, they have to walk back through it and take all the damage. Um, yeah, Prismatic Wall is uh, is great. Um, finally, level twenty. Bard 18, Magical Secrets. Um, and we can, of course, choose two spells, any spells we want. Wish, of course. Um, but besides that, I also would suggest, and this is probably the only subclass I would suggest this, but Tsunami. You can create a massive Tsunami out of nothing. And that fits our creation vibe. And that is our build for today. I hope you guys liked it. Of course, leave a like if you did and comment letting me know what your favorite part about the build is. Next week, we're going to be talking about the College of Eloquence Bard, and that is going to be a ton of fun. So, of course, make sure you are still subscribed so that you don't miss that. Um, and we're going to have a really good time with that. Until then, have a great weekend. Stay safe out there and stay healthy. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.